In Alberta, the blockade at the Coots border crossing is over. The protesters packed up and left this morning, one day after police made a series of arrests and seized a cache of weapons and ammunition. Heather Urex West has been covering this story since it began. Heather. Donna, after 18 days, it's over, and protesters say it was the discovery of weapons here that brought this blockade to an end. They left town just after breakfast. A long line of tractors, trailers and trucks. It's too bad that we have to leave, but it was very, everybody did really their best and to get freedom for everybody in Canada, and uh, it breaks our heart. They'd vowed to go on blocking the border crossing until all COVID restrictions were lifted. But protest organizers say this changed things. A cache of weapons, including long guns, handguns and body armor. And these weapons were brought by people who had the intent on causing harm. 13 people were arrested. Most now face charges of mischief and weapons possession. Three have also been charged with conspiracy to commit murder. Our message has been one of peace, peaceful protest, and to keep that message strong, we felt the best decision was to move out. As protesters left Coots at a second protest camp near Milk River, police took names and collected information. Still under investigation, who brought the weapons to Coots and what was their intent? The Canadian Anti-Hate Network says one set of body armor seized by police displays the logo of a group suspected of promoting hate and violence. We recognized immediately that the patches were the flag of a, of a network called Diaglon. Basically, they're like a, a, a neo-fascist acceleration, accelerationist militia. Just before noon Tuesday, the Canadian Border Services Agency confirmed the Coots border crossing had reopened to cross-border traffic, a relief to many industries who move tens of millions of dollars worth of goods through here every day. Donna? Heather Yurex, West near Milk River, Alberta tonight. Thanks, Heather.